Hi, Dr. Todd Dunn here for Life on the Edge. Today I'm Dr. Todd Dunn because this is the first in my series of planned videos on chronic lymphocytic leukemia or CLL. So I have my science hat on. Also my glasses so I can read my notes. What I'm going to talk about today though isn't chronic lymphocytic leukemia. I'm going to talk about blood because blood is the uh, basis of chronic lymphocytic leukemia since it's a blood cancer. So I'm just going to give a little introduction to blood so that some of the things that I say in later videos about CLL will make a little bit more sense. So let's get started. What's blood? Well we all know it's the red stuff that's inside you that your heart pumps around through your arteries and veins to transport oxygen from your lungs to various muscles and organs and then to trans and also transport nutrients like glucose and also and then to transport waste products from exercise or whatever back to the kidneys the liver and the lungs to get rid of carbon dioxide well, what does blood consist of? Is it just a red liquid? Well, no, it isn't. It's quite a bit more complex than that. Uh, however, we're going to keep it pretty simple today. Blood basically, at the first level, consists of two parts. It consists, consists of a liquid, which is called plasma. Plasma makes up about 55% of blood. And plasma is basically water. It's probably 90 plus, 95 percent water. And in that water, our various things are dissolved, including things like sodium, potassium, calcium, bicarbonate, etc. In addition, there are organic molecules called proteins dissolved in the plasma. And these molecules are primarily the protein albumin and then there are other proteins that uh, are involved in blood coagulation and also globulins. So these are the major constituents of the liquid itself in blood, the plasma. The other 45% or so of your blood is blood cells. Uh, they are come in two varieties, two primary varieties, and as we'll see as we get into this a little more, that there are a lot that those primary varieties can be broken down. Actually, I should say three varieties. The most abundant cells in your blood are red blood cells. They make up probably 99% of the total cell population in your blood. And they're the cells that actually transport oxygen from your lungs to the various organs where it is consumed. So red blood cells are pretty important. They contain hemoglobin, which is an iron-bearing compound, and that's what gives them the red color. And the hemoglobin is the actual chemical that the oxygen bonds to so that it can be transported by the blood cells. The other 1% or so of the blood cells uh, consist of two kinds of cells. Platelets, which are the second most abundant type of blood cells. Platelets are very tiny little blood cells, a tenth the size of red blood cells. And there are quite a few of them, but maybe as many as 5% of as many as there are red blood cells. And finally, there are white blood cells that make up a small fraction, less than 1%, maybe a quarter of a percent of the total cells in your blood. I've already talked about red blood cells. Uh, I'm going to go in and mention platelets. I'm going to go into considerably more detail on white blood cells. But before I do, I want to run over a quick summary of just how many cells there are in the blood. In order to do that, we have to establish a reference volume. So if we're going to talk about the number of cells in your blood, we have to, since everybody has a different amount of blood in their body, 
we can't talk about the absolute number of blood cells in your body. What we need to talk about is the number of blood cells in a specific volume of blood. Uh, because this is science, uh, we're, we'll be using a metric volume. In particular, we use a volume called a microliter. A microliter is one millionth of a liter. A liter is a little bit more than a quart. And on a size scale, a microliter is one millimeter cubed. So a cube, one millimeter on a side, size, on a side. And a millimeter is a twenty-fifth of an inch, or about, ooh, that much. So a microliter of blood is not much. It's a typical drop of blood might have twenty to thirty microliters of blood in it. So we're talking a pretty small volume. So how many blood cells are in there? Well, first off, most abundant blood cell, red blood cells. There are about four and a half million to six million red blood cells for a healthy person. Women have a few less than, than men do by about maybe five to seven percent. So women may have as little as 4.2 million to say 5.6 million where men typically are, run around four and a half million to six million red blood cells in one microliter of blood. That consequently you can see that in that tiny volume if there are that many blood cells, red blood cells, that they're pretty small. And in fact you cannot see red blood cells without a microscope. So you have to look at them under the microscope if you want to see them. And if you take a drop of blood, put it on a microscope slide and drop a cover slip on it, that's called a blood smear and that's the standard format for looking at blood under the microscope. Okay, what's the, what about white blood cells? Well, white blood cells are much less abundant where there are four and a half to six million red blood cells. There are only about five to eleven thousand white blood cells altogether. The white blood cells are bigger than red blood cells on average so they're fairly easy to pick out. They don't have hemoglobin in them, so they're not as strongly colored. Uh, but if you consider that there are probably on the order of five, six hundred times as many red blood cells as there are white blood cells, you can expect that if you look down your microscope, you're not going to see very many white blood cells. They're less than, much less than one percent. So if you're if your microscope field of view has 10,000 cells in it, probably only 50 or 60 are going to be white blood cells. So they're not very abundant. What about platelets? Well, platelets are more abundant than white blood cells and quite a bit less abundant than red blood cells. An average person in good health has somewhere between 150,000 platelets and 450,000 platelets in a microliter of blood. However, platelets are very small and in a normal microscope slide when you're looking at red blood cells you'll see these small dots, maybe 5% the size of a red blood cell. Those are platelets. They're very small. So even though there are quite a few of them, they're not that easy to pick out. So let's go over a quick summary. Red blood cells, most abundant, millions of them, probably four and a half to six million red blood cells. Platelets, tiny, even compared to red blood cells, probably on 150,000 to 450,000 for a healthy person. And finally, white blood cells. They're bigger than red blood cells. They're not colored, and they're, but they're a lot less, five to 11,000. So we're talking a total blood cell population for a healthy person, probably six million, six and a half million at the most, in a microliter of blood. Okay, now let's talk about white blood cells a little bit more. There are actually five basic kinds of white blood cells, and I'm going to talk about them in their relative order of abundance, from most abundant to least abundant. The most abundant white blood cells are called neutrophils. And an average person has 
about 4,500 neutrophils per microliter of blood. So neutrophils typically are going to make up 45% or so of your total white blood cell population. The range for neutrophils ranges from about 1,900 to about 7,800 for a, a normal person in reasonable health. The next most abundant type of, red, of white blood cell is a lymphocyte. And lymphocytes average maybe 2,500, 2,500 per microliter. And the range is about 1,000 to 4,500. I'm going to come back to them, though, after I finish going through the other white blood cells. After lymphocytes, we drop down quite a bit in abundance to the next kind of, of, of white blood cell, and that's the monocyte. Monocytes, you're typically going to have only around 300 of them in a microliter of blood. And the range is normally about 100 to 800. After that, we have a type of cell called an eosinophil. Now, you don't have to remember all these names. The ones that are important, I'll bring back to you at the end. And you typically are going to have around 200 eosinophils in a microliter of blood. The range, though, ranges from almost none to about 500. And the least abundant white blood cell is a basophil. And you might only have 20 of those in a microliter of blood, compared, again, to five, roughly 5 million red blood cells. So they're going to be hard to pick out, 20 to 40 basophils. And the range is about around zero up to about 200. So those are the principal types of, of white blood cells that you're going to have in your blood. Now, since this series is about chronic lymphocytic leukemia, uh, you might think that I want to talk about lymphocytes a little more, since lymphocytic and lymphocyte basically refer to the same thing. And indeed I do. Chronic lymphocytic leukemia, or CLL, is actually a blood cancer specific with specifically connected to a particular type of lymphocyte, and that's called a B lymphocyte. So that means I'm going to have to tell you a little bit more about lymphocytes, but not much. Basically, there are three primary types of lymphocytes. There are T lymphocytes. They're named that because they mature, in, although they're formed initially in your bone marrow, they mature in a gland called the thymus, hence T. They make up about 70% of all of the lymphocytes in normal blood. So if you have, say, 3,000 lymphocytes in your blood, you probably have about 2,100 T lymphocytes, which are often just called T cells. The next most abundant lymphocytes are B lymphocytes, called B cells, and they typically make up around 23% of, of the total lymphocyte population. So if you have 3,000 lymphocytes, you might only have about 700 B cells. So they're not very abundant normally. And finally, there are what are called NK lymphocytes, or natural killer cells, and these uh, cells, these lymphocytes, only make up about 7 to 10 percent of the total lymphocyte population. So if you have 3,000 lymphocytes, you only have about 300 NK cells in a microliter of blood. So basically, CLL, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, which is a cancer of the B lymphocytes, is really a cancer that in a normal person would only be affecting around a thousand cells in a microliter of blood or less. But unfortunately, it doesn't quite stay that way. And we'll be talking about that in considerably more detail in the next video. Before I do that, though, I want to say one last thing about blood in particular. 
a little bit about the functionality of some of the cells. I've mentioned red cells already. What about platelets? Platelets are important because they are one of the, your, your blood's primary defenses against bleeding. If you injure yourself and, and uh, puncture one of your arteries or a vein, the platelets in your blood will flow toward the wound where they will aggregate and plug up the hole. So they act to stop bleeding. The hole is then further cemented by a component in the blood called fibrin, which sticks onto the platelet plug and seals it up, which then allows the vein, artery, capillary, whatever, to heal completely. If you don't have enough platelets in your blood, the fewer you have, the longer it takes the amount needed to plug a hole up to get there. So you bleed longer. So platelets are very important when it comes to stopping bleeding. What about white cells? Well, all of the white cells together, lymphocytes, monocytes, basophils, eosinophils, and neutrophils, make up your adaptive and innate uh, immune system. They react to intruders, if you will, in your blood and in your tissues, bacteria, viruses, etc. And they attack those things, those intruders, and destroy them. So if you have the wrong numbers of lymphocytes, basophils, eosinophils, neutrophils, monocytes, you're going to have an, an immune system that isn't working properly. So anything that changes the number of white blood cells or interferes with how they operate is going to cause you to have a compromised immune system. Okay, that pretty much covers what I'd like to say about blood. I think it provides us with a basis to talk about chronic lymphocytic leukemia and hopefully to understand what I'm going to be saying about it. Uh, in that context, the particular types of blood cells that you need to be keep in mind are red blood cells, platelets, neutrophils, and B lymphocytes or B cells. The others, they're important, but they're not going to be that big a factor in what we're going to be talking about when it comes to chronic lymphocytic leukemia or CLL. Okay, that ends what I wanted to say about blood, except for one thing. If you want to find out more about blood, you can get something like this. This is Williams Hematology. This is a textbook that a doctor who is studying to be a specialist in blood diseases, a hematologist, would get. A regular doctor in medical school, a medical student, would only see this book in the medical library. It's got pretty much everything you could want to know about blood and blood diseases in it. It's not, like any textbook though, it's not completely current. This one is published in 2015, which means that it went to press maybe 18 months before that and is a little out of date as a consequence. But it has a lot of useful information in it. And also, if you can't sleep at night, opening this book up and reading a few pages will take care of that for you. Anyway, I'll take my science glasses off and we'll call this video finished. If you found it educational or useful, click the like button. If you want to be notified of future videos on this subject or any of my other areas of interest, you can subscribe and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.